on the bright side, we're never gonna get there and we will end up dying alone. Welcome to Pint in the Sky. It's been a while, sorry about that. We've been busy. Yeah. We are in the Castro room. Yep. At University yes. of Melbourne. We're not in the pub, sorry about that. The sound is a lot better in here, so I hope you appreciate that. Uh, anyway. The sacrifice we're making by not yes. being in the pub. Yeah, we can't even drink while we talk to you. But we will be talking about something Castro related, um, and Alan, you can yeah, this Start is uh, this is a recent study with radio telescopes that have been looking into what's called the uh, our galaxy zone of avoidance. This is the galaxy, which kind of gets in the way of things behind the galaxy, like other galaxies. Yeah, like if you're trying to look at things outside our galaxy, the fact that we're living in a galaxy is really annoying. And this comes yeah. up in a lot of different contexts. So we have it, it's zone of avoidance, and those are capitalized because it's really been a problem in astronomy for a while. But with radio telescopes, you're able to actually see through the gas and dust of our Milky Way and then uh, see the galaxies that lie behind. This recent study has found something like 143 galaxies that we didn't know about measured their motion and find that they're all drifting towards these massive over concentrations of matter gravity from this these these great attractors are pulling them at hundreds if not nearly a thousand kilometers a second in other words we're all falling into something and it's hidden behind our milky way so this is what we call bulk flows so this is where galaxies clusters of galaxies are sort of moving around in the universe. So if you have a whole lot of galaxy clusters in one direction and there are galaxies nearby, they're gonna kind of drift over toward that. And that's just, gravity attracts. And that's there's, and, yeah, and that's all it does, yeah. And so if we can measure how things are moving around, then we can learn something about where the gravity is distributed in the, in the universe and thus learn something about things that have gravity that we can't see, like dark matter. So we can kind of trace out where the dark matter is by where things are moving in the universe. Mm -hmm. And in general relativity, space-time is sort of like a fabric that has dents in it and is bent around by yeah. gravitational things. Um, we're kind of measuring the shape of space-time, the sort of shape, the topology, um, or topography, I guess. I was I would have said topology just then. I think it's I, topography. Tomography is no, 3D. No, tomography scanning. is 3D. Yeah. Topography is like the topographic. Right. Surface What's of topology, things. Then? Topology is like whether it's simply connected or a torus or whatever. Oh, geometric. Ah, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Anyway. Yeah. yeah, so you can use this to measure. <laughs> Just took a random detour there. <laughs> you can also find really big objects that are hard to see, like big concentrations of dark matter that happen to have a whole lot of things flowing toward them. One of the cool things about um, these kind of velocity probes is that you actually are sensitive things way further than what you can see because mm -hmm. the gravity is basically telling you about something that's hundreds of millions of light years away but you didn't have to stare that far right you're using the, the galaxy's motion it will tell yeah. you there's this huge concentration it's like if you can see water moving toward a waterfall you, you don't have to be able to see the waterfall to know that something is happening there and everything's sort of flowing that direction yeah we've known for a while like since the 70s right the great <laughs> attractor um, Again, capitalized. And this is at least half a dozen galaxy clusters all linked together. And behind that is the Shackley supercluster, which is even bigger. It's a supercluster. Yeah. So you can imagine the enormous amount of material and the warping of space time for us to be feeling that kind of yeah. influence. I always, it always seems kind of spooky to me, like the great attractor, like we're all kind of falling toward this thing inexorably. This was this reminds me of Brent Tully's work. Do you remember that Lanny? Yeah, Lanny, yeah, yeah. Lanny, yeah. Lanny, yeah. Lanny, yeah. 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 This is this this also idea that, that there's yeah. like a sort of massive sort of super super cluster almost that we're a part of. But I think I think that dark energy is gonna win. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. when dark energy sort of takes over to a greater degree, we're never gonna fall into the greater attractor. So, you know, on the on the bright side, although we are sort of falling toward the this massive cluster of stuff, um, we're never gonna get there and we will end up dying alone. Wait, that was the bright side? <laughs> <laughs> so if we 
Yeah. So yeah. all the galaxies um, become ever more distant and fainter yeah. until eventually the night sky is dark, except for, well, by that well, point we'll have slammed into Andromeda. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll have mixed up with Andromeda and the local group. So yeah, so the future ends up being um, dark, lonely. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, so thanks, Castro, for, for that, <laughs> uh, for that result. But uh, in the meantime, in, in the meantime, meantime, we can we can map out where everything is and test whether, you know, our models of how the universe works with dark matter and dark energy mm -hmm. make sense. Well, so, I think that's a short, sharp, sweet pint, so pint yeah. in the sky. So, yeah. yeah, we'll probably edit this down in any case. <laughs> probably. <Like this> <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks for, thanks for listening. Um, I'm Katie Mack, Astro Katie. I'm Dr. Alan Duffy. Oh, we're getting tired. <laughs> I thought we were being casual here. All right, fine. I'm Dr. Katie Mack. This is Dr. Alan Duffy. You can and just call me Al. It's cool. I don't, I don't go by titles. <laughs> and we're both on Twitter. And I'm Astro Katie. Astro Duff. Yeah, so check it out. And uh, check out the other episodes of Pine Sky. See you later.